Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIA's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both empower and inform the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 441. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KB, KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're sitting here in the middle of the beautiful Ozarks, and I, I'm telling you, this time of year, this is one of the most beautiful places in the earth. I thank God for it because it's, it, there's a lot of allergies and things if you, if you have trouble with that because there's so much vegetation, but man, is it, is it gorgeous. And the rain has cleared up. Um, we had a great last week. Um, I was, you know, seeking God on on a lot of things, and He was uh, reaffirming to me about uh, the Druidism here in in the Ozarks that I needed to pick back up my uh, my warfare. Uh, he said that I'd, I'd got my eyes on on people and worrying about the effects effects of my prayers on the people because. When I prayed those kind of prayers down where I was raised, it just looked like everything flew to pieces, and um, the protection over the occult wasn't there anymore. And I just—it was just horrible to watch. I mean, God sure made a way for us, but I think I kind of carried that over when I came up here, and I haven't went to that level of warfare since I've been here. And He told me that that uh, I have to do that. He said that just put the people in His hands; He'll take care of them, and, and just go to war. And he was telling me about, you know, we had just deluge of, of rains, and, and there's so much flooding all over. And uh, he said that they can they can do rituals and do things with rain to cause harm. And so I started praying over that, and boy, I, I felt like the area got a lot better when I did. Yeah. I, and I didn't, um, I'd forgot about, you know, where we prayed over the Druidic seal that was around here, and I think that that did upset some things, and so there's, um, I think that they're just trying to build power back all over the nation, especially for this time. You know, when there, I think there are several levels of uh, weather manipulation. We have the occult can do it. Uh, we have using scalar energy. I, I think that, you know, with, with everything going on, both in Russia and in China, uh, at, with, as the best I can tell, last time I did research, you know, we're like with our heart project and some of the scalar energy projects we have here in America, where it may be second, third, fourth generation, Russia is probably at the fifteenth to twentieth generation. And when you look at the patents they even have on the harp, Doctor Bigich in, in one of his books on 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 angels don't play this harp gets into the um, the patents that it was to control weather, that they can heat up sections of the ocean to cause you know if they if it cools down it's La Nina if they heat it up it's El Nino, all these different things. And but I, I think that if we stand as believers and begin praying over these things, mm -hmm. whether it's occult based or technology based, God can supersede in the areas I believe where believers that. are. And I, I, I that. think that we need to begin praying for God, bring bring nature back under your control. And Father, you can give the rain where it needs to be, and you can bring balance and you can bring harmony back to your creation. And I, I think that needs to be really a vital part of, of, of our prayer life right now. Well, I had a confirmation by listening to somebody's testimony of when they were in this area years ago. Um, there was a, a one time when uh, Steffi was very small, maybe a, a year old. She's born in 80, so this would have been like 81 or 82, one of those those years. And I... We were had a plan. I was going to go up with a friend, and we were going to spend the night and then shop the next day and then, then head home. And um, I don't even know where that idea came from. You know, that's a lot of how this works. If, you're, if you are under the influence of mind control is you'll just get these things that pop in your head, and you think, oh, that's a good idea, not thinking about it. could have been, you know, broadcast to you. But anyway, I got up there, and uh, I just had this feeling, we better not stay here. And I just... I don't. I couldn't even explain it, and so um, just headed back home. And I think this was the, the same time this person was talking about that they uh, they had a an experience where there was someone in a or something in a, a brown robe. And you know, years ago when when I was starting to have memories, um, 
sometimes it would be a black robe, but sometimes it was brown. And I was thinking, why would there be brown? And then I found out later on that brown robes are used in Druidism. Um, and an odd fact that when, you know, before things really got um, got heated, I took uh, I took my youngest daughter. She was really having trouble just um, being out of school and different things, so I took her to a, a concert like one of those little boy band concerts and and we got up there and I just started learning some of this stuff and they walked out on stage and they came they marched down they had brown robes so I was sitting there thinking well this wasn't the best idea (laughs) but um I I think that there's the other things that this person was saying has confirmed that the very things I've seen They've seen, and so I always thought, well, surely that wasn't here in the Ozarks that that happened. Surely that was like on this trip to Utah I made or something. But I, it may well be here. Yeah. He described things, and I thought, well, that may be what I was remembering. And well, you know, and, there's there's just so much coming out about uh, you know the uh, the fallen seraphim. The Nekesh in the garden was the seraphim. Now there's also. Uh, you know, I've, I've got to do more research where it talks about Lucifer. Is it, was he the anointed cherub that covers, or was he the anointed one in the garden with the cherub, if you read uh, the Septuagint version? But there's there's a lot coming out. Uh, Donna Howland, her new uh, her uh, most recent book, dealing with uh, the gap theory and between Genesis 1, 1, 2, one of the things, Mary, that they discovered is that some of the most ancient temples on planet Earth, some of them, uh, they're, they're antediluvian, they all worshipped a serpent god. That uh, whether it's Leviathan or, or one of these, uh, and you, you can even go to, um, like when you deal with Quadiquazel or Metakuru in America, what's interesting is that that winged serpent could take on human form and it was a white guy with a white beard. And when you had Blavatsky talking about meeting with the Great White Council, she would most likely met with fallen seraphim that were uh, taking human form that appeared as Caucasian men. Mm. Uh, that's why I think that's one of the reasons why the Aztecs and and the the and, and those when you had white guys from Europe show up, they thought they were representatives of their of, of Quetzalcoatl because he could take on that human form. And even within uh, UFO folklore, you have you have you know we, we everybody knows about the Greys. You have the Nordic, which are kind of like the Vikings; they're they're too perfect. Uh, but you also have what they call their Draconian, that are that are lizard type beings that are either fallen seraphim or they're hybrids of seraphim mm-hmm. uh, that uh, that are, are deep under the earth. And I, I think as 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 these things approach. And as we get into the end times, these things are the, this part. These parts of the Bible are going to become more real and more relevant when they start manifesting. Right. And you know that's why we we need to get on board now. We need to learn our spiritual warfare. We need to learn our authority in Christ now, uh, because when if if you wait till these things show up, too late. But uh, you know, and you've already proved. I mean, there there were times when. Uh, things kind of like UFOs that the, the the one lights in the in the sky. Oh, there was no craft but, but or anything. There had to, it was there, just there, something there, was causing it. <laughs> well, there had to be something up there projecting it. And when you use the name of Jesus, it backed yeah, off. So, it the, did. so there had to be a presence there with yeah. it. Well, um, I thought that you know we're starting to see a crack in the monster of injustice in our nation. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, Hunter Biden. Maybe was convicted, <laughs> and now we've got to wait and see for the sentencing. But it that may be the crack of where it's going to start turning around. I'm yeah. I'm just believing it is. But he may the end same up getting time, six lashes of the wet noodle, and they let him go for all we know. But at the same time that all this is going on, I think that we've come to a time where I used to try to shield people from hearing too much of the truth because a lot of people just can't take it, and I always want to be sensitive to that. But I don't believe that a person's going to be able to thrive in the future if they don't understand some of these things. Absolutely. And you know, everything, I've told you before that everything that I started remembering when all this was going on, um, I had to ask God to just prove it with, let me see things with my eyes, let Mike see something, because I was never going to believe it. It was too far out there. And um, I do believe that 
if they can put programming in your mind, I do think that there's such a thing as them putting a false memory in. Now, I'm not, you know, encouraging the furtherance of the false, false memory, memory syndrome, syndrome because they, they use that to just discount everything. Uh, and that's not true. But but I do believe that God's so faithful. If you ask him, he'll show you it with your eyes. He'll, he'll reveal things that will show you the truth. Have things come out of people's mouths and just right in front of you. And, um, you know, like with with the reptilians, I, I had a, a memory of that. And uh, the only thing I could connect to it later in years was we were told that there was um, two groups, uh, one that worked with these things underground and one that worked against them, that was set against them, and they were called uh, Magi. And I had a part, when, when all this started coming up, I had a part that I told Mike, the name of this part was, she called herself Maggie, but it was spelled M-A-G-I. And so the, when the memory came forward, it was, I was sent underground to get information through a deceptive way of getting in there. Something went wrong, and I had to try to get out of there. Well, the what we would describe as these hybrids or reptilians, whatever you want to call them, came after me. And I was able to turn around <laughs> and say, in the name of Jesus, and they got down on and laid down on the ground with their arms stretched out in front of them. And so I never could figure that out. I thought, why? What would they do that for? But if they were, if they were fallen, maybe they they have to respond to every knee will bow of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. And I mean, I, I mean, knew the it was Bible's very succinct was to that. protect me. But yeah. you know, those are the type of things that I don't think that they put in my mind because it would have been the testimony of the power of Jesus' name. So I don't believe well, that yeah, was I, one. Well, I, I think some of the things I remember I was down uh, with True Legends with Steve Quayle and him and I were backstage and. Uh, sometimes with Steve, uh, he'll just start sharing stuff off the top of your head that's just worth its weight in gold. He began to tell me how that uh, Majestic 12, when it was going on, that you en- they ended up dividing into two groups. Mm. One was called magicians that aligned themselves with these fallen spirits. The other ones that were fighting against them called themselves magi. And that, that was Which just lines astounding what, to me yeah. because, I mean, I'd never heard anything like that. Uh, the other one that I, I believe is a true memory is, is I was very young, and um, I was in a huge group of people, and there was something going on, a big commotion in the middle uh, that I, I couldn't see from where I was. And a man came and got down on his knee in front of me and said, uh, Mary Lou, sing Jesus Loves Me. And I just did it because I, I sang that all the time when I was a kid, according to my mom. And um, it stopped whatever was going on. So so I don't believe those things had been put in because they testify of the power of Jesus' name. And, I, and I'm what, what I've just done from the beginning and asked Mike to help me is make sure we don't get off on something. It would be so easy to get off on something false on this. Uh, but God can show you the truth, and he can reveal things to help you through this. And, you know, a lot of the things that have happened and memories I've had, I, d- I don't share because I just think people can't handle this. But, guys, I am telling you, we're coming to a time, if people can't see what's here, if then then when they, when they come out, when these things, you know, they're, because they're going to show back up, then I, I don't think people will be prepared. And what I want to do is just make sure that people understand that they have authority over them. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, not, they're not something that's come from another planet, and they seeded humanity here. They're, and they're interdimensional. Right. And so that's, that's the difference. Um, and, you, you know, right now, just as an example of what I've heard from all over, is the enemy's attacking people like never before. You know, they're trying to wound their spirits. And if your spirit's wounded, you can't be effective in God's kingdom. They are, they're attacking people's minds, their wills, their emotions. And even, even in some instances, I honestly believe that there have been so much done, has been so much done by the kingdom of darkness that we don't even understand through technology and through um, the power of these, these entities that have gained such strength through the abortions and the innocent bloodshed. I don't even think people are in touch with their own will. 
I don't even think they could tell you what they would want or what any. I, th- I just think they're following whatever this mind control system's put on them. I, I think when saving grace, we're touched by saving grace. You know, when Jesus said, "Behold, I give you a, th- uh, you know, I, I give you power after after His resurrection, all power is given unto me." That word exousia, the same one that's in like in Luke ten, where He says, "Behold, I give you power over." Th- Serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Uh-huh. If if you look it up in a good lexicon, like uh, Thayer's, or um, or um, the other one just left my mind. I'm sorry, but I mean something more than just Strong's. The very first definition is freedom of choice, which means before we're touched by saving grace, when God begins to work on us so that He can His grace can lead us to salvation. The very first expression of authority that we have for the first time in our life, we actually get to choose right, Mm -hmm. which means before that, we were in bondage, we were enslaved to the system of this world, and we did not have free will. Sin takes away free will because it brings bondage. If you sin, you're a slave to sin. A slave has no free will. And I think that we need to begin seeking God to move in that level of grace to where we, we have, uh, I think one of the things that uh, has kind of concerned me, yeah, you know, I, I, one of my favorite books on spiritual warfare is a Puritan one, The Christian Complete Armor. And it, it is a Puritan read. Anybody who's ever read Matthew Henry, it takes them 15 pages to make a point. And that's kind of the, the Puritan way of doing things. And they've got, actually got uh, modern translations of it. But in, in that era, when they looked at all the weapons of our warfare, it was about crucifying the flesh. It was about bringing sin under. It was about being able to make the, make the choice to have righteousness. And what we have done and, and some of the lies that we have bought, because sometimes, you know, a lie can take you hostage because it gets you the wrong way. Uh, back when the faith movement started moving, you know, they, they were teaching the authority of the believer, but at the same time they were teaching you the devil couldn't touch you. That's a lie. You know, the, the Apostle Peter, after the cross, said, listen, mm-hmm. you, you have to be vigilant because the enemy is, 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 is a, a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe Peter didn't get the memo these guys had, or maybe they're wrong and he's right. But when we, we realize that most of our, our weapons are first to get our will free to where we can really choose God and move in the things of the kingdom of God to move contrary to this world— if we if we do that kind of spiritual warfare first, the spiritual warfare on the outside gets easy. That's true. That's true. And the the more doors I got closed, and the the more things I repented for, and could see, you know, repented for sins on our bloodlines. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, I saw I saw things in our youngest daughter when she was little, and I didn't have a clue to know what it was. Uh, one was a. It was just a green ring that came around her mouth. And this was before I got free. I mean, I just I just couldn't figure out what it was. And, you know, I was just praying, oh, God, heal her, whatever. But I noticed uh, later on years after I, I found out all this stuff and she had her wisdom teeth taken out, it showed up again. And then I thought, okay, this is something that was there when she was little that I missed. I and it, it took hold. That's why I, you know, of anything that I would like to do in the ministry, uh, besides making sure every kid has food, that's a biggie to me, is making sure that parents can pray over their kids when they're little, that if something's taken a hold of their bloodline, if something is there, uh, that it doesn't get root. Because once something gets root, then, man, it's, it's a harder game. You know, and and so if you if you say those prayers of breaking those curses, uh, you know, a little little child's not going to sin. Um, but it, it's something but it's, familiar. For yeah, it was family lines, right? And so um, it's just things like that that just oh, it just breaks my heart that I wasn't able to to do better when my kids were little, and didn't have a clue about what to do. But doggone it, I can sure share it with the young people today, and that's where my heart is. Um, you know, I want I want to help. Everybody, and that's what I, I pray we do on these podcasts is give information that will help them. 
Uh, but my heart is to see this young young generation not have to go through this stuff, not have to fight battles that are that are almost impossible to fight because you don't even know what you're fighting. Half of this stuff, the reason I try to tell this stuff that, that I've seen is people don't even know it's it's there. They don't even know what they're fighting. You know, I think a lot of people are going, and, and I, I think depression can be caused by a, a physical imbalance, you know, a chemical imbalance or something. And so, so I'm not saying that all depression is a spirit, but I think a lot of times people are running to doctors and and trying to figure out what it is, and it, it can be a spiritual problem. So those are the type of things um, that I want to relate to people, just to, just to save them some trouble. I just see, and you know, you go years and years down the road with this stuff working on you, it's one it's one deal to get out of it. And, you know, um, I know God can just do miracles and setting people free and things like that, but, but if you get set free and you don't know, where that's from? Where's the the root? How to how to get you know maneuver through the salvation of that, um, maneuver through the bondage of that? You can get back in trouble again, and so it's those type of things. And I'm just praying that Mike's going to be able to to teach and give you biblical you know scriptural background for everything, and um, that's why you know I wanted to share. Um, there's there's so much that Satan's attacking bodies with. I mean, if you just listen to to what they've done with the food and everything, you, you just every day you just have to trust in God to purify our air, our water, and our food, remove harmful ingredients because once your body's affected, it'll affect everything. Absolutely. And so, you know, I've told you before, Luke ten nineteen, boy, that was that was huge. God started me out there in my process of getting healed, and uh, if I hadn't learned to take authority and learn Matthew sixteen. Um, I don't know where I would have been. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about, too, is um, a lot of times when people will debate about binding and loosing, they'll mention Matthew 18, 15 through 20, and that's talking about how to handle the situation in the church. Well, it's setting church policy, what yeah. we're going to allow in our community, what we're not going to allow. Uh, but they, they don't deal with both of them. And it, it's, right. it's literally and it, like trying to compare apple to a tomato. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times people will, will discount binding spirits and loosing the power of the kingdom of God and things like that because they, it, I think a lot of it is, has been from the kingdom of darkness because they don't want you to bind. They don't want you to take authority and bind and loose because that really screws things up. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, does. it does. It screws up the enemy's plan. But in Matthew 16, starting with verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Peter was uh, proclaiming he was Messiah. And, and but he was also what's what's interesting is the is the wordplay here, because his name was Simon, also surnamed Peter, and Peter means pebbles, so that there could be no confusion. Jesus was not establishing the church on pebbles; mm-hmm. he was he was established it on the rock the of rock. the revelation yes. that he was the He's creator, the that he is Messiah yeah. and Almighty, Almighty God. Almighty God come in the flesh. And so then it goes on and says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And, and I, I saw this absolutely come to pass in our lives. As God was teaching me this, it was absolutely throwing the kingdom of darkness for a loop. Um, I don't remember it ever being taught in a church where we were. If it was, I've missed it or blocked it out or something. I don't, I don't remember because it was the first things, some of the first things God showed me because he knew what I was fighting, and it was a huge battle. And so he gave me this, and I, I just went after it. I just, I just said, okay, whatever's causing uh, you know, the occult activity, I, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I loose the power of the kingdom of God. Now, how could the devil mess that up? You know, whether whether teaching us there's no such thing as binding or loosing, but how about something more tacit? Okay, 
we begin to redefining who Jesus is. Mm. The moment you leave the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and all that that means Hebraically, okay, that he is the creator, that he is the only known expression of Mm -hmm. God in the earth. The moment you leave that, the more that you depart from that, the more that your ability to bind and loose is diminished. Well, you have to have faith. Yeah, you have to have faith, and you have to be... You have to, you know, when Jesus, remember when the centurion came to him and said, uh, I'm a man under authority. I know how this works. All you got to do is speak the word. My servant will be healed. And Jesus marveled at his faith. He said, I've not even seen this kind of faith in all of Israel because he understood when the more that we're submitted to the lordship of Jesus, the more we're able to exercise authority. There is like a proportional thing. And you, you can't live for the devil all week and then get tired of the devil in one area of your life and try to bind him up. You, you have to live for Jesus. You have to, with, with, in, in the kingdom of God, it really, it's either all in or all out. When, well, when, when, you, get, when you get into this standing on, on, on the fence, um, it, is, it, it is such compromise, it's, it's going to take you down a rabbit hole you're never going to get out of. Either Jesus is exactly who he said he is, and the apostolic witness of who he is, he is the creator, he is almighty God come in the flesh, and that there is no other name in heaven and earth that men might be saved. We start there, and we submit to his lordship, we submit to his authority. And how do we love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, all our We keep right. his commandments, okay? Right. And the Holy Spirit's here to keep, the, and the power us to keep his commandments. When we begin living like that, then when we speak, because we are completely submitted to his authority, I'm like that centurion, because I am under authority, and God says, you don't belong in this situation, devil. I now am pronouncing what the king is speaking mm-hmm. into my heart. You go. That's right. You know, we, we forget. We, I mean, when so many people teach on a mountain, if this mountain offends you, just command it to move. You better not be opening your lips if Almighty God isn't telling you that it needs to move because Jesus already said to the president, I do nothing yeah, unless it. I hear the Father say it, that's it or do it. That's right. And then heaven, and, heaven will back you up. That, and so it, it's, a, it's us coming in line with heaven and us, infor, us enforcing the kingdom of God wherever we go. Well, that's right. And, you know, we're trying, we were talking about last time about we've got to get the foundation established and then build upon that and teach and um god took me to nehemiah and it was during that time you know when it goes on through there and it says about all the gates Mm -hmm. and talks about that and they were going to rebuild and they had to have a a sword in one hand and a person you know the one group was building and the others were having to fight to get it built and so god was telling me the the fight is going to be on because, you know, he's got to establish his church. And, and it's not going to be a church where some of these people are, are preaching that, oh, Jesus paid all the price and you can just live how you want to. Your sins are taken care of. That, that is so far off. And that is going to lead so many people down a road of destruction. And so we've got to, as God reestablishes how he wants his church, we're going to, be, we're going to have to, to fight. And, you know, the name of Jesus is so powerful, so important. Um, I wanted to read uh, Proverbs 18.10. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. So I wanted to read you out a, a commentary out of Matthew Henry because I, I love the way he says stuff. It says, um, I'm going to read a couple of portions. It says, God's sufficiency for the saints. His name is a strong tower for them in which they may take rest when they are weary and take sanctuary when they are pursued, where they may be lifted up above their enemies and fortified against them. There is enough in God and in the discoveries which he has made of himself to us to make us easy at all times. The strength of this tower is enough to protect them. The name of the Lord is all that whereby he has made himself known as God and our God. Not only his titles and attributes, but his covenant and all the promises of it. These make up a tower, a strong tower, impenetrable, impregnable for all God's people. Isn't that good? It is. It's wonderful. And so, you know, those, those are things that, <clears throat> that we can stand upon. Truth in God's word that as we enter, enter warfare, uh, because we're not going to, 
you think the enemy's going to just sit back and let the the foundation be you know revisited and see what how do we have this foundation and right with where it's established the foundation of our messiah he says here's the keys to the kingdom what you bind on earth is going to be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And if we are doing what God says, if we're following that, following his word, then heaven will send angels and back you up. I don't believe that we have authority to, to command God's angels. No. I don't believe that's where that authority is. I think that we can take the authority and, and command the fallen angels. I think we can bind up the enemy. But I think we have we ask and say, Father, as I declare your word over this situation, I believe that you're going to send your angels that excel in strength to perform the word, that are going to come in, in might and power to vanquish the enemy. The Bible never tells us any place to, to speak to angels or to, or to pray to angels. When I'm praying and I'm seeking the face of God and those angels can hear God's voice in my prayer because I am seeking his face. They heed to the power of his voice, okay? They, they heed to the voice of his word. Here on the earth where we have authority, we've been given authority. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I'm ex-military, okay? I, I was in the Army and uh, not even in combat. You know, I, I wasn't in a combat MOS. But, you know, if, if, if special forces came through, which is really what angels are. They're, they're God's special forces and more like the Air Force. You don't, you know, somebody that's, that's pushing an IBM Selectric typewriter doesn't start commanding special forces. And uh, I, I think I saw that once, one time when I was in, and I, I suspect looking back that there were probably a Delta group came through and I saw them look a two-star general in, in, the, in, the, in the face and very politely said, sir, we cannot do that. Told a general no. Well, why? Because a Delta group take their orders directly from the President of the United States. Angels take their command directly mm -hmm. from Almighty God. No place else. We don't command angels. That This whole concept of sending these spirits, to, that's what the occult do. They send demons to go do stuff. Yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 don't, I don't mess with that. They're, they're, under, they're under Jesus' command, and whatever, whatever he tells them to do, they're going to do. And when they can hear his voice in my prayers, they can go to work, okay? But I don't command them. Mm -mm. I, I seek the face of God, and, and he's the one. He is, he is the commander. I Not heard me. somebody one time saying they were visiting ministry, and it was on TV, and they said, well, we need to command the angels to go and bring in the finances you need. And I thought, man alive. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I just, it just grated, you know, and I just thought, boy. It's hubris. <laughs> you know, even though they have been sent to minister to heirs of salvation, they do what God tells them to do, not what That's we right. tell them to do. And I think, there's time for, I think it's time for us to go back and to bring balance there's been a lot of crazy stuff taught um, about angels. And in fact, we were watching where one noted uh, preacher within the faith movement had written a book on, on angels, and we were watching a clip from it. And all of a sudden, my ears perked up as we were watching it because he used the name of an angel that is not found anywhere in the Hebrew Scriptures. It's called Metatron. Oh, my word. And it, But it's directly out of Kabbalah. You'd think he's talking about something out of the Transformer movies. Or Megatron, no. Uh, but Metatron, when you when you look at Kabbalah writings, because you have had these uh, these rabbis deep into Kabbalah will astral project into the second heaven, and they will commune with other rabbis supposedly, which I think are demonic spirits that are pretending to be ascended rabbis. But they're also interacting with thrones, and in the and in and I don't think they can get past the second heaven. Now you you cannot get into the third heaven unless God gives you an invitation. That's you you can't do that. And so when you're dealing with the second heavens, you're dealing with fallen principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and wickedness in heavenly places. And so Metatron is probably another name for Lucifer. And, and you, you, you can either go that way or when you read Third Enoch, which is, was, which is a writing by a rabbi that was deep in the Kabbalah, that uh, Enoch was... Uh, ascended from being a human to an angel, and he was made into Metatron. That's what they said it came from. 
And and so and so here you have a preacher t- supposed to be teaching these deep things, and he's trying to teach that when it says the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, which was Jesus, really wasn't Jesus; it was Metatron. That is absolutely well, scary. Uh, I, it's so it's so uh, concerning because I think now is that time when we're going to see people go off cliffs. I, I just think that everything that has looked right for so long and people have just supported and everything, I think we're getting ready to see God straighten everything out and show the truth. And I and I pray that over us every day. Father, show us the truth. If we're off in an area, you you show us that we can't miss it because God's yeah. faithful. If, you, if you're seeking the truth and you want to see the truth, he will make a way for you to see yeah. it. And I, I think one of the things, and, and I, I kind of want to deal just a little bit about the fire of God, because we, we're in a season right now that there's so much strange fire in the body, we wouldn't know the true fire of God if it showed up. And it, what's, what's interesting, I think a lot of the occult have come in, and they have introduced strange fire, uh, whether they're psychically projecting it into the, into, the, into the mind of the minister or I mean, with with some of these guys that I, that I've, I've you know I've caught them cu- quoting morals and dogma, mm-hmm. I've caught them quoting Kabbalah. Uh, they're they're you know, it's like when you have how do you top being you know it's like you have this express elevator to heaven and you're coming up with revelation after revelation after revelation. I want my revelations to come from the Word of God, okay? Uh, that they would they would eclipse the uh, the life's work of Isaiah. Or Jeremiah, I mean, with with this all the stuff that they have, how do you keep topping that? How you keep the, you you fall into the same thing the Gnostics were doing uh, in the New Testament, and so then they begin drawing from these esoteric things because it sounds very spiritual. Uh, and what they're doing is they are slowly introducing strange fire to the body of Christ. And there, I mean, there's there's a lot of different places that we see the fire of God. You know, people will point to Sodom and Gomorrah, and I don't necessarily think that was the fire of God, as I think it was probably a a divine nuclear weapon that worked at the subatomic level. Because the, 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 I've read where people have gone where they know now know where Sodom and Gomorrah is, and even something as solid as a ziggurat that's made out of stone, Mary, you can walk up and you can actually push your your arm all the way into it. It's it's nothing but ash, but it, yet it holds its form, because the the judgment that fell on Sodom and Gomorrah, and there was probably uh, several million people that lived there that were judged by God. That was not quote unquote the fire of God. That was that was a uh, God basically deconstructing creation and His judgment with them. The first time that we see the fire of God really uh, is when the Pharaoh was coming after. Israel mm, and they had their and they had their, yeah. and the pillar of fire protected the people of God. That I, as a believer, the fire of God is protective for me. Mm-hmm. It, it 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 paused the Pharaoh until they could get across the Red Sea, and then it set it. And the fire of God set the Pharaoh up to be drowned in the Red Sea. We we see that they had a a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. We we see on the uh, and but we we also are introduced. I mean, God gave them divine fire that they used. They had to keep kindled on the altar at all times, which reminds me that 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 God gives the fire of God in my life, but I'm the one responsible to keep it kindled, mm-hmm. to keep it burning, and, and to tend to the fire of God in my life. But we need to understand that there's strange fire, and strange fire produces different things than the holy fire of God. Uh, one of the first things that it does is it produces greater purification in the life of the believer. Mm-hmm. If you say you're in revival, and you know, it used to be in the old days, I, I love reading uh, with Charles Finney and, and many of these, when the, the great revivals that they had. When the, the fire of God fell then, brothels closed down, the taverns closed down, the, I mean, just uh, sin stopped. That if a sinner came anywhere near anywhere near where the fire of God was, they began crying out for salvation. Okay, and a lot of times, what in some areas, in modern days, what we have called the fire of God, prostitution didn't decrease; it increased. Okay, I mean all all these different things. We we need to see the effects on society. Uh, the fire of God also empowers and makes believers bold to proclaim the gospel. 
you know, after after Peter and and and, and then when when they were beaten and they were told not to preach in the name of Jesus, they went back and they and they told people what had happened, and they prayed for boldness. God, you know, we just we just got whooped for healing somebody in the name of Jesus. Do it more. Do it more. And the Bible says the power of God shook the place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the fire of God causes us to hunger more for the Word of God and the presence of God. The fire of God will cause us to be uh, less earth-minded and more centered on the purposes of God in the earth. I, I, I'm astonished at the Apostle Paul. And one of the things that, that comes to mind, he was preaching in Iconium. They stoned him and left him for dead. And, and the way the Bible reads, I, I think he actually died. And they gathered around him and prayed. God raised him from the dead because it wasn't his time yet. You know what he did the next day, Mary? He went right back to the same city that had just stoned him to death the day before, and he was preaching the gospel again. He, he was a man driven by the fire of God to get the job done. Um, I also believe that the fire of God builds a hedge of protection ar- around us from the influence of the enemy. It's like keeping the Pharaoh back. It's like keeping us from the elements, like when there was a fire by night, keeping them warm in the wilderness. We, we need to understand that this is a season that we do need the fire of the Holy Spirit, but it's not wildfire. So much of what we have seen that they have called revival, and we have actually seen videos where the leaders of those revivals called it chaos. The Bible says where there is confusion, there is every evil work. When the fire of God falls, it brings order. Well, yeah, what about demons manifesting? That's actually bringing order because God is beginning to manifest that demon so that it can be arrested and cast out so it can bring healing and order to that person's life. I think a lot of what of what they're seeing is, is strange fire. I mean, I've, clips that used to probably years ago, like in the late 90s and stuff, I would have seen and just thought, well, that's that's something. <laughs> but now I, they show some of those older ones and then show some of the newer ones, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. Boy, I what, what, wonder what Satan did with that. Now, we know I can look back now and say, of course, that wasn't God. Um, but I wonder what he did with it. You know, I've said in meetings with Derek Prince and, and many others, that some of the manifestations they're calling the, the 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 manifestation of God today, he would have stopped the service and cast the demons yeah, out. I believe that. You know, in in Toronto, you've seen clips of that, where they would have people barking like dogs and things like that. And oh my goodness, I just and I and I'm manifesting thinking manifesting an animal spirit. Well, what you know, it just breaks your heart. You think what happened to that person? Yeah. And I remember that. Well, after, after I was called to ministry, I was probably 14 years old. My dad had me watch. It was an old Burt Lancaster movie, Elmer Gantry, where he was a charlatan oh, preacher. Uh-huh. And, and what's interesting is the, one of the things they had during his revival meetings is there were people barking like dogs and all the things that, <laughs> that we're seeing uh, that they, they knew back then uh, that, th- that these manifest. You, you, you don't see the apostle... Paul going in some places and people barking like dogs and him calling that the Spirit of God. He had to cast it out. Yeah, it's, and, just, it's a sad thing to but, me. But manifestation for the sake of manifestations to create a hubbub so that you bring more people in, we, we have tolerated way too much. And, and instead of us having spiritual discernment, and moving in the authority that we have in Christ and start binding that stuff up mm-hmm. and saying, I'm not going to let any spirit manifest here except for the Spirit of God. That's right. And and I think that we can, you know, based on what God tells you to do, he may take, you know, say, start praying over your area, start praying over your city. And and that's that's what I think we're doing right here. Because yeah. I think it's why God brought us to Marshfield, because it was a hub for where the Druidic water ran out of, how those four rivers were used, and then the lakes and everything, and the Ozarks. I mean, and well, as well and, as all the Indian mounds that are in the area, because uh, I remember years ago we had an expert come through, and they had uh, he shared with us how they have done X rays of the Indian mounds here. They're identical to the Druid Indian uh, mounds over in Europe, so it was the same spirit and same religion. So we got Druidism. Well, we Sneblin, Bill Sneblin, in one of his t- tapes said that he used to go down to the one that was the head of Druidism over all the nation, he declared, was in Arkansas. 
and he said he'd come down there and, and they would see UFOs. Yeah, they would be doing. He'd be teaching them the rituals mm-hmm. and stuff, and UFOs would show mm-hmm. up. And so, I mean, this this stuff is real. I, I think part of where we're in a season, you know, the Bible says if the foundations be removed, what can the righteous do? But I think we're at a time if God would open our eyes, we're at that Nehemiah moment. The temple has been laid waste. That the the walls have been laid waste. And we have we have had the enemy come in and try to build their junk on top of ruined walls. Mm-hmm. And what we have got to do, I, I think God is calling us to go back all the way back to foundation. I'd, uh, every t- every week when I go into prayer about writing and stuff, what, what what God keeps hitting over and over again is the words of the Apostle Paul that I want to know nothing among you except Christ and Him crucified. That we we have to we have to go back to the foundational stone of who Jesus is. He is the, he is the cornerstone. And the apostle Paul said it this way: he said, "Listen, every one of us ministers, when we build, we're going to be held accountable. That it's got to line up with that cornerstone. Now, if it is if it is of the kingdom, it's gold, silver, and precious gems. If it's not, it's hay, wood, and stubble. And every one of us." that are called to the fivefold ministry are going to have to stand before God. And are we going to say, is our excuse going to be, well, that was the model of ministry in the day that I lived? Or are we going to go back to the Word of God and discover, maybe rediscover the true model of ministry? That's it. That's what I believe we're going and, to do. And to rediscover the Word and to rediscover the commandments of God and how that there is continuity from Genesis to Revelation. It's one book written by one God. And, and to learn how to flow in that. I think God is calling us back to foundational issues. If the foundation is solid, then you can really build on it. Mm-hmm. But right now we're living in a bamboo hut thinking that we're living in a mansion. And and it's time for God to open our eyes and, and to begin speaking to us and allow his word to, to begin really taking hold in our lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I, I can see with what I'm getting ready to do, that there's going to be a blending of a lot of stuff that we deal with, but there's going to be a lot of foundational stuff. I, I, I see too many people that are trying to deal with the Dead Sea Scrolls or deal with the Nephilim and all these different things when they don't even have the foundational stuff. They don't even know who they are in Christ. And you're, you're trying to do graduate level work when you've not even graduated kindergarten yet. No, they haven't been taught. No, they haven't been taught. And it, you know, it may get you a lot of hits on YouTube, but it may get you a lot of hits in real life too when you're not prepared. And so God is calling us back. The Apostle Paul said it this way. He said, test everything. Test, prove everything. Mm-hmm. Test it all. That's right. And if it holds up to the scrutiny of God's word, then say, okay, this is good. I'm going to establish that. And then he said, eject anything else. Because the enemy, and I, th- I think we have seen this in, in the life of, of great moves of God and, and great men of God, is they started out well but they ended tragically because they weren't ready for the the enemy's counter moves. Well, and I think, don't you think a large part of that is because we weren't connected to Hebraic heritage and, and didn't go to the Greek and the Hebrew in, you know, looking at the Word of God and, and establishing the meanings and things. I think that was part of it. And then I think that's why Satan got a hold of all of that, started uh, interjecting the Kabbalistic, information and then you got people that just end up denying jesus absolutely so i mean he's he's a strategist on both ends he you know he he works in everything and i've shared this in several of my books when you look at talks about how that he was created he was perfect in warfare and in strategies of war and uh, his kingdom is based on that and so, you know, we're, we're trying to play marbles and he's playing checkers and God's playing, you know, seven dimensional chess. But the good thing is we can bypass his checkerboard and start playing chess with God. Because if, if, if I, I don't, you know, I don't even care if I'm just a pawn in the hand of God. If I'm in the hand of God, I'm in the safest place that it I is, could be. It is. I mean, I, I, without his leading, we're lost. Yeah. And he can put me on the board anywhere he wants me because there's there's a purpose to everything. Yeah, when we're following him, it's like the name of the Lord's that strong tower. Yeah, it is. And we run into there, you know, and that's a protected place, and that's where we want to stay. Yeah. 
Well, we shared a lot of things that we're, we're hoping that we make you think. And, and friends, it, it, it's, it's time for you to pop open the Word of God yourself. And, and I know by just a, a quick summary of YouTube that there's just a lot of junk floating around. And I, I think for the most part, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's some good people that you can listen to. But I think it's time for all of us to open up the Word of God again, break out our commentaries, break out our lexicons, and get deep in the Word of mm-hmm. God. I think there's a hunger falling on God's people for that. I do too. Because God is going to reestablish the foundation mm-hmm. so that we can build what we're supposed to build in the That's last right. days. Because Jesus promised, Mary just read it, the gates of hell is not going to prevail against what God's getting ready to do with the church. That's right. And I'm believing that for you guys. We're believing that for us. And Father, just give us the grace, the gumption, and the courage to be that people we ask. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.